Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It's your girl Britt Reacts and today we are reacting to Jim Carr's legendary performance at Apollo. Let's see what he has to say. Jimmy Carr, being here is a dream come true. Only this time I've got trousers on and you're not zombie penguins. <laughs> Live at the Apollo, if my friends could see me now. Well, well they could have, they should have booked tickets. <laughs> this show is, of course, for the BBC, who have been accused of misleading viewers. I can tell you that is nonsense. And it's great to be able to tell you that live from Vegas. <laughs> and if you're watching the repeat, it's great to be back. If you're watching it on repeat. I don't know the BBC reference he's, that he was just saying. Um, but this is like, this is one of those things where this 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 marks a pinnacle in anyone's career. The, the Apollo Theater in uh, New York is legendary. And so if you're ever able to perform there, it's almost, I've actually been to a show there and there's some, the energy in that space is like, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, good on him. That's amazing. They do edit a lot of stuff on TV. I mean, that bit earlier where I told you how to get out of paying the license fee. <laughs> They'll probably cut that. <laughs> who do you think you are? That's a great BBC show, isn't it? I'll tell you who I'd love to see on that. Prince Harry. <laughs> this... What? I'd just be interested in knowing what his background's like. I've got well, now we all kind of know, right? It, that's been fully divulged for all of us to enjoy. So, yeah, don't worry, Jim. It happens in the future. Friend whose nickname is Shagger. You might think that's quite cool, but she doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a friend. She's got a theory. She reckons the way to drive a man wild with desire is to nibble on his earlobes for hours and hours. I think it's bollocks. My girlfriend said to me, have you been having sex behind my back? <laughs> I said, who the fucking hell do you think it was? <laughs> and another thing, it wouldn't kill you to look round once in a while, check how I'm doing. <laughs> well, I'm Jimmy Carr, and we've got Alan Carr on the show later on. How about that? <laughs> Who's Alan Carr? Are they related? Who's Alan Carr? Are they related, guys? Let me know. Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr, and we've got Alan Carr on the show later on. How about that? <laughs> I keep on getting mistaken for Alan Carr, so what I've done is I've stopped sucking men off. <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. You know, I'm a very gay-friendly act. I was asked last year to judge Mr. Gay UK. I said, no problem at all. He's against nature and against God, and he's going to hell. <laughs> right, who have we got in the audience this evening? Uh, we've got uh, Nikki Hamilton-Jones is in. Hello. I've seen your show. Yours is the one where you get ladies naked and then they cry. <laughs> we've all been there. I don't know who she is or what show he's referencing, but she does not seem to be in agreement. so... There's that. She's like, no. We've all been there. <laughs> For me, that's a very successful Friday night out. Oh, no. Have we got James Morrison? Is James Morrison in the house? Where's he? Can't believe it. Hello, James. How are you? An amazing musician. Especially if you find James Blunt a bit rocky. <laughs> you give me something. It's an amazing song. You Give Me Something is my favourite song ever about chlamydia. <laughs> my favourite, I love it. <laughs> Dean Macy's here, where's Dean Macy? Dean Macy? You're our hope for Beijing, aren't you, in the decathlon? I love the decathlon. You know, it's, it's where you do ten different things, isn't it? Sort of jack of all trains, master of none. <laughs> if you don't... I don't know who any of these people are. And I don't know if it's like, I'm too young to be at this party too young, or like... I just have no idea who these people are. Also, 
I never knew that a decathlon was like 10 events. I'm learning so much. That is true. Like you're jack of all trades and master of nothing. I feel, I feel that way about myself. Like I can, I'm good. I can do anything I set my mind to. But I don't know if I've mastered anything in my life, you know. But I'm good at literally everything. Not to toot toot, but toot toot. Don't mind me saying. <laughs> The 2012 Olympics is going to cost eight billion pounds, which is, you know, a lot of money. It's probably going to bankrupt London, but you can't put a price on two bronze medals in cycling. That's it? That's it? Incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, the highest speed ever achieved on a bicycle was done by a British man. 166 miles per hour on a bike. It was recorded at a level crossing. <laughs> Eight billion pounds is a lot of money. I mean, for that kind of money, we could have another three weeks in Iraq. <laughs> I don't have a stalker, but I do have a woman that sends me pants in the post. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> People ask me how I relax, so I tell them. I put Smarties tubes onto cats' legs to make them walk like a robot. Smarties, tubes. How are all these people getting all these references? I feel like they're like super British references, like UK references. I don't understand. Am I too young to be here? In 2012, I wasn't like a baby. 2012, I was 23, going on 24. Why don't I know some of these things? What's going on here? <laughs> If I'm really stressed, I make them go down the stairs. Animal it's adorable. abuse. I look so confused. I realize some of you will be worried about the cat. Don't worry about the cat. If it's hurt, if it breaks its leg, it's already got a splint on. I should warn you, don't, don't kick off this evening. I'm middle class, but I'm hard. Al dente, you might say. If you got the al dente reference, you're middle class too. Well done. I've got quite a posh voice though. Would you agree with that, Hammersmith? Yeah. It's quite a posh voice, but we've all got- Okay, so he's not at the Apollo in New York because he just said Hammersmith. What Apollo is this? Guys, help me out here. I feel like I'm lost at sea on this one. What's going on? Huh? I've got quite a posh voice though. Would you agree with that, Hammersmith? Yeah. It's quite a posh voice, but we've all got a phone voice. Mine's quite breathy. <laughs> I quite like those phone sex lines. <laughs> I like them because they're the only place in the world where premature ejaculation is an advantage. <laughs> I once came in under 75 pence. <laughs> Sorry, I can see you down there. You're quite a young man just starting off in life. You might not have the money to be wasting on those expensive sex phone lines. <laughs> what I would recommend to you is NHS Direct. It's a free call, they're all wearing nurses' outfits. <laughs> and they're bound by law to listen to you talk about your swelling. <laughs> My friend got his bathroom redone, he was showing off about it. He said, yeah, we got a walk-in shower. I said, how are you getting into it before? Right. I went on Ask Jeeves. <laughs> I asked Jeeves why Google is so much better. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Ask Jeeves. I am old enough to remember Ask Jeeves. Dang, what happened to Ash Jeeves, y'all? It like had the little butler man that like stood there next to the bump. Oh, Ash Jeeves, where'd you go? I went on Ask Jeeves. I asked Jeeves why Google is so much better. <laughs> I used to buy lottery tickets every week until I realized you can watch it on TV for nothing. <laughs> to think of bungee jumping as suicide for indecisive people. <laughs> a lot of people cry when they chop onions. The trick is not to form an emotional bond. <laughs> I don't mind Tony Blair getting paid millions and millions of pounds. The real trick is not to cut off the, the tops of the onion. Don't cut those off and you won't cry. Also, don't rub your eyes. A lot of people cry when they chop onions. The trick is not to form an emotional bond. <laughs> I don't mind Tony Blair getting paid millions and millions of pounds for his autobiography now he's no longer Prime Minister. Because let's face it, he's got mouths to feed. One of which is enormous. <laughs> he 
said in an interview recently that he sometimes makes love to Cherie up to five times a night. And there's me thinking the decision to go into Iraq was difficult. <laughs> Shuri, I guess, is his wife. And by the way that he spoke about ha ha mouths to feed, uh, one can draw a conclusion there. Again, this is all kind of like UK humor, and I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> When I was at school, I had a friend called Russell. Well, I say he was a friend, he was actually someone that just came and sat next to me on the first day of school when we were five and continued to hang around for the next 15 years. <laughs> just inviting himself along to everything and kind of being there. We've all got one of those, haven't we? No. If you're thinking, I haven't, it's you. <laughs> and I'm not proud of this, but it happened, you know. We were at a party, we were a little bit drunk. He was very drunk, he passed out. And myself and another friend, we shaved off his eyebrows. He was really surprised. <laughs> but you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm on a diet at the moment. It's really simple. I can eat as much broccoli and cauliflower as I like. Mm. It's brilliant. I haven't had any so far. <laughs> I'm thinking, ugh, like, what does that smell like coming out the other way? I love broccoli, not a fan of cauliflower. Fun fact. My girlfriend bought a bread maker. Has anyone here got a bread maker? Yeah. My girlfriend bought a bread maker. All the women, yes. Pounds. Great. I mean, we live next door to a 24-7 convenience store. Bread is 49p a loaf. Which, granted, is convenient and cheap. But we will break even in the next four years if we double our consumption of bread and we can somehow get the ingredients for free. Right. We don't take into consideration labor costs. I saw recently an interview with uh, R&B singer Ella May, and she's from the UK, and she was saying that the bread here in the States is so sweet. Um, she was like, all of it is just so sweet. And the interview was like, what do you mean? Like, are you eating like sweet bread? And she's like, no, like your regular grocery store sandwich bread is so sweet. And I read the comments and everyone was like, oh yeah, like American bread is so chalked up on sugar. It doesn't make any sense. And people like, I mean, the comments were just, commenting like every country was like America has the worst bread I'm like dang but I mean it is true Americans literally like travel to go have other people's like bakery items so it makes sense we also are allowed to have like all kinds of things in our food that other countries don't approve of so that's interesting maybe she just likes fresh hot bread I've never had a bread maker my mom had one once I don't even ever remember her using it though <laughs> we don't take into consideration labor costs <laughs> what I'm basically saying in that joke is I love you Caroline but for fuck's sake <laughs> I was asked this evening not to be patronizing or sexist <clears throat> I thought fair enough let's face it birds can't take it <laughs> You're not offended, are you? Of course not, you're thinking about shoes. <laughs> don't worry, that's postmodern misogyny. <laughs> that joke was, in fact, steeped in irony. So don't you worry your pretty little head about it, love. <laughs> I've got a theory as to why women buy so many shoes. It's because they spend so much time on their feet, walking around the shops, <laughs> buying shoes. <laughs> My girlfriend's a very deep sleeper. You, you can't wake her up. Which has got its advantages. <laughs> she's going to be thrilled when I tell her she's pregnant. Oh my gosh, that is terrible. Terrible. Um, I'm not a big shoe. I, don't, I, I have shoes, but like I'm not a shoe shopper. I just have like accumulated a lot of shoes in my 30 plus years of life. But I will hold on to a pair of shoes forever. Um, I'm definitely more of a sneaker girl. Then a heel girl I actually just bought some new New Balances yesterday, two days ago, and I love them. Hmm, maybe I am a shoe girl. <laughs> I've got a friend that didn't believe in sex before marriage, so I showed him some photos. <laughs> I said, well, she can't be married to all four of them. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I failed to perform sexually. I'm not going to go into details. Suffice it to say, I arrived early. 
And my girlfriend said, don't worry, that happens to a lot of guys. I said, right, I'll stop you there, a couple of things. Why do you know Firstly, that? who are these a lot of guys? Right, why do you know that? And secondly, if it's happening to more than one of us, don't you think it could be your fault? There is a common denominator there. He's not wrong, folks. <laughs> Our reaction as a society to Britney Spears, especially men's reaction to Britney Spears, I think tells us a lot. Because Britney Spears is the kind of woman that men see on television and say, well, she's let herself go. What is she, a size 12? What a state. <laughs> but if we fucked her, we'd be high-fiving strangers on the night bus. Right. Right. Ladies, if you get a burning sensation when you pee, it could be one of three things. Could be cystitis, could be a bushfire, <laughs> or it could be someone's talking about you, but JJ. <laughs> so I'm telling these jokes. It sounds like I'm misogynistic, but I'm not. I'm actually quite a modern man. I've got no problem buying tampons, but apparently they're not a proper present. If a man gave me tampons as a present, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my God. Happy birthday, Mom. Not your mom. It's super on the box. I don't know what you want. <laughs> if we're all God's children, what's so special about Jesus? He's the chosen one. Duh. Duh. <laughs> I was raised Catholic. Any Catholics in? <laughs> that couldn't be more inappropriate as a response. <laughs> Any Catholics in? Whoa, hey! <laughs> I was raised Catholic, and the thing that used to annoy me about church was all the standing up and sitting down and kneeling. I wish the priest could just pick a position and fuck me. Oh, Are you drinking Lord. tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Are you drinking? I like drinking when you get beyond beer and wine into the crazy drinks you only ever order when you're drunk. <laughs> Things like the flaming Zambuca. No one has ever ordered a flaming Zambuca when sober, and the reason is clear. I feel like that's the opposite for me. If I'm somewhere and they have, like, you know, specialty drinks, I'll drink that first, and then, like, as the night goes on, I'm like, just bring me a Jack and Ginger or a rum and Coke or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, keep it simple, stupid. It's on fire. <laughs> it's the equivalent of thinking I'm a bit thirsty, walking into the kitchen, spotting a glass of water, and then thinking, no, out of the corner of my eye, I've spotted a gas hob. <laughs> Let's see if that takes the edge off a thirst. <laughs> the only possible reason I can think of to order a flaming Zambuco when sober is if you're going out with a girl and she is something just a little bit special. She's beautiful and she's funny, she's intelligent. You think she might be the one. You've been out on a couple of dates. You think you're ready to make a commitment. But she's got a bit of a problem with facial hair on the top lip. <laughs> now that could be a very awkward thing to bring up. I think much easier, just take her out for a drink. <laughs> Two flaming Zambucas, please. <laughs> no, I'm not driving, they're both for you. <laughs> oh man. The fact that he just went like nonstop, joke after joke after joke after joke after joke after joke is wild. That's really wild when you think about like having to memorize that. It's crazy. Um, he's funny, though. All right, y'all. Go have the day you deserve. Peace.